What's going on guys, welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In this module, we're gonna be talking about dictionaries. So it's another type of data structure, very similar to arrays in that it's a list of data. The only difference here is that dictionaries are a set of key value pairs, as opposed to arrays where each individual item is a singular value. Each individual item in a dictionary is a key value pair. So what exactly is that gonna look like? Here's an example. So we can see that the indexing system is exactly the same with arrays, right? So at the zero index, this is our first item. The only difference with the dictionary is that each item, like I said before, is a key value pair. So what is this example that we see here in front of us? It's like a social security system, right? So this would be a dictionary where all of the keys are social security numbers and all of the associated values are people's names. So we would use the social security number as a lookup tool to find out who the person's uh, associated with that social security number is. So I'm sure you guys have had to do that at some point, right? You're on the phone with your bank. They say, hey, give us your phone number or the last four of your social so that we can find out who you are and verify your identity, right? You use dictionaries to do that. Another example would be this like stock ticker symbol system where each a uh, company that is publicly traded on a stock market has an associated ticker, and then you know you have an associated price with that key. So, for example, Tesla would be two hundred bucks. Apple is, you know, one hundred forty-three dollars. Whatever it is, you could also associate this key with the company's name. So, TSLA is obviously Tesla. AAPL is obviously Apple. GOOG is obviously Google. So. Uh, let's go to the next point, guys, where all keys in dictionaries have to be unique, okay? So you can imagine things would get really messy and confusing if two people had the same social security number, right? You wouldn't be able to tell who's who. That's why your social security number is a unique identifier for who you are. So when someone goes to look, who, look up who you are, it doesn't give them back 10 different people. It's associated with a single person. Same with stocks, right? You can't have duplicate ticker symbols because then you wouldn't know which company's which. So in dictionaries, all keys have to be unique. And this brings me to my next point, which um, states that dictionaries are a significantly more efficient lookup tool than arrays since we can associate a value with a unique key as opposed to just trying to find something with a random index. And we'll dive deeper into that point once we hop into the code. Let's go ahead and take a look like take a look at what it looks like to create a dictionary. So just like arrays, we can create a blank dictionaries or initialize them with values. So this is what dictionaries look like programmatically. So each item is also separated by a comma, just like arrays. And we use a colon to differentiate the key and the value. So in this case, guys, you know, we create our variables here just like we did with arrays, but we can see here that each individual item, like the comma separates one between the other, is this key and value pair. So if we look at this guy, we use a colon to differentiate the key and the value. What comes before the colon is the key, what comes after is the value. So here we have a name to email dictionary where we're associating a name with an email. Then here we have a name to age dictionary where we're associating a name with some sort of age for a person. And then this is a blank uh, dictionary where we're just stating that, hey, all of the keys have to be strings and all of the values have to be doubles or a number type. It could be integers, whatever it may be. So this is an example of a string to string dictionary. All keys are strings, all values are strings. This is an example of a string to int or number dictionary. All, string, uh, are, all keys are strings, all values are integers. And then here, this is a blank dictionary that states that, hey, all the keys have to be strings, all the values have to be doubles. And then just like arrays, we use our constructor to create that guy. So now that we've gone over what these are and how to create them, once again, let's hop back into the code and go over how we can create some dictionaries of our own. All right, boys and girls, let's hop back into Xcode and let's create a new uh, playground for our dictionaries. So it's gonna be a blank playground and we're gonna call this guy dictionaries, dictionaries, there we go. Cool, okay, so let's create a mark here to go over how to create our dictionaries. Spelled that wrong, give me one second guys, dictionaries. Okay, cool. 
All right, so let's go ahead and you know create this name to email dict. And we're gonna open up square brackets just like we did with our arrays. And we're gonna say John is the key, and then you're gonna put a colon after the you know the parentheses, and you're just gonna say like, you know, John Doe at gmail.com. So this is an example of how to create a dictionary and initialize it with values. And if we wanna you know, add another one, you put a comma after this key value pair, and then you, know, you can just create another one like Tom. Tom Long at gmail.com, something like that. You know, who knows, who cares? So this is an, uh, a dictionary with initial values. And if we want to create a blank dictionary, we could go here and just say, hey, this is a dictionary that's gonna be uh, something that where all the keys are strings and all of the values are strings, and then we use this constructor to create it. Okay, and then you know another example is we could create like name to age dict and say that, hey, you know, John is 32 years old, Tom is 24 years old, something like that. So we're initializing it with values, we just have a different key and value system. So keys can be anything you want, values can be anything you want. You just have to keep them consistent throughout the, uh, you know, your whole dictionary process. Okay, so let's go over how to actually look things up in a dictionary now, right? So, you know, you guys still might be unclear for, you know, to the purpose of these things and why they're more beneficial than arrays in some situations. So we're gonna go over how to actually use them now. So let's go ahead and add a, another section for our dictionary lookups. So what if I wanted to look up, you know, John's email? So I could say let John email equal name to email dict, and then I just have to pass in my key, John. And make sure the, 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 cap, the capitalization matches up, guys. And let's go ahead and run this and see what it gives me back. So I get back John Doe at gmail.com. So this is how I get the associated value with my key. So the way you're supposed to really structure your dictionaries, guys, is whatever you want to use as your lookup tool or parameter, that's what you make the keys. And then the values are what you want to find out based on the keys. And you could have done that the other way around as well, right? Like you could have made the email the key and the value the name. It really just depends on what you want your dictionary to be used for. Just know that the keys are what you are used as the lookup tool to find the associated value. So let's just do another example here. Let's see if we can get Tom's age. So we could say let Tom age equal name to age dict and pass in Tom. So what this is doing guys, just to clarify, is that it's the dictionary is going through and trying to find this key Tom and then it's giving you back the associated value. So that's why we see 24 because Tom is 24 there. Okay, so now that we've gone over how to look stuff up in dictionaries. Let's go and see if we can update things in dictionaries. Like let's say John changed his email, right? So let's make a mark for updating dictionaries. So if we want to like go back to that example I just talked about where we want to update someone's email, um, you know, say you have an app and John just changed his email, then you could say name to email dict, and then you go and find John, right? That's what this does. Then you could say equals John Doe at yahoo.com. And then we could just go ahead and print out our name to email dict, and it'll come up here. And guys, we can see that we have updated John's email to John Doe at yahoo.com, whereas up here it was John Doe at gmail.com. So this is just how you update something. You go and find the key, and then if you say equals, it's going to update the associated value with that key. So, all right, guys, what is the benefit of dictionaries to arrays here? Well, let's hop back into our arrays guy really quickly. And let's like imagine that I wanted to find someone in this array or find out some information about them, like who they drive for, right? The only way we have with for accessing things in this array is, is, is using ran, like these index values, right? So I have no idea who's at these, uh, these spots in my array. 
like in this situation, it's really easy because I made the array and populated it with names, but anybody could be at index zero. Anybody could be at index one. Anybody could be at index two, right? So dictionaries give us a much more efficient way of looking things up, right? So if I wanted to, for example, like I said, find out who Lewis Hamilton drove for, I could just have a dictionary that associates driver and a team name. And then I could look up that driver in the dictionary and it would automatically give me back their team name. Whereas with an array, I would have to go through each individual item to try to find that, right? I'd have to say like, hey, go to item zero. And if it equals Lewis Hamilton, then give me back the, the, the team name or whatever it might be, right? So that's the benefit of dictionaries over arrays. They each have their own individual use cases. And as we get into more uh, you know, examples with fundamentals here, we're going to see when to use one and when to use the other. This right now is just exposure for you guys to see what an array is and what a dictionary is and what the differences between them are and what the benefits of each one are and what the use cases for each one are. Once we get into creating our own programs and applications, we'll see exactly when to use one or the other and the benefits and drawbacks in each situation. So that's just a really quick breakdown of dictionaries, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the next module now. Thanks for watching this one. Peace.